Length fields are really what sets Airtable apart from other tools, especially if you've been using spreadsheets. It allows you to build relationships within your data so you and your team can stay more organized. If you are new to Airtable or you just want to get a better and deeper understanding of how linked fields work, then this video is for you. My name is Cherry Yang and I'm the founder of AirOps Consulting. We're a full service Airtable consulting company helping our clients with all of their Airtable and Zapier needs. If you've got a database you want to build or a workflow you want to automate, then let's get on a call and see how we can help you. If you want to go up your sleeves and master Airtable, our Airtable Bootcamp is going to give you all the knowledge, tools, and support for you to build your own awesome and scalable databases. You can sign up for the course or schedule a call with me at the links down below. There are three types of database relationships that we need to know. The first one is a one-to-one -one relationship. The second one is a one-to-many relationship. And the third one is a many-to-many -many relationship. I'll give you some examples from our daily lives to help describe these relationships. For example, if two people are getting married, they may have a one-to-one -one relationship. And if we were putting them into a database, we would say here's partner one and here's partner two and they are getting married. In the second analogy, I'll use a parent-child relationship. So a parent can have multiple children or they can have one children and sometimes it's a one-to-one -one relationship or a one-to-many relationship. So if your friend who has three kids in their household, that would be a one-to-many relationship. The last analogy I'll leave you with is within a school. In the case of a many-to-many -many relationship, we can use the classroom as an example. So if the three kids go to class, they can be taking many different classes and the classes themselves will have many different students enrolled in them. In order to set up the relationships between your data correctly, you have to make sure the data lives on the right tables. When we're coaching clients through how to set this up, we tell them that if you've got different entities or different types of data or different objects of data, you've got to put those into separate tables. For example, if you've got a list of clients, the clients might be companies and the companies could have individuals attached to them. You want to put the company information and the individual's information into separate tables instead of in one table. Similarly, if companies have projects associated with them, you also want to put the companies and the projects in separate tables. In this case, we're going to use a project management database as an example. So when you're setting that up, you'll want to have a few tables to start with. I'm adding in my clients table, my projects table, my tasks table, and the people table. When we're thinking about these different tables, there are several relationships we can already start to see. Now that we've got our tables all set up, we want to add in some sample data and link the tables together. Now I've got Cherry's Coffee Shop and AirOps Consulting as my two clients. When you want to add a new linked field, you can go to the plus button and you can select link to another record. Because we've already got our projects table set up, we can click on the projects table in order to link to it. We were saying earlier that this is a one to many relationship, so we'll want to allow linking to multiple projects. Once you're done, click the create field button. In this case, I'll add packaging projects through the projects linked field and I'll add it in the projects table directly. They're the same thing. Now, if you add it into your projects table directly, you'll have to make sure that the client is selected. In order to select this, you can go ahead and click Cherry's Coffee Shop. 
Now, once we've added a third project in here, we can also link that project within the client's table. Using the linked field we set up for projects, you can click on the plus button and find all the projects that are not yet related to that client. I know we've got some unnamed records when we created that table, but that's totally fine. I'll just go ahead and delete these three blank projects. After we've set that up, we also want to connect all the different tasks. With the tasks, they are a child of the projects themselves. And a project can either have just one task, unlikely, or multiple tasks. So once again, we'll want to set up a one-to-many relationship between projects and tasks. You can go ahead and click on add a new field, then select the linked record field and click on tasks. Again, we'll want to allow linking to multiple different records. Once that's done, we can add tasks to each one of our projects. Again, we've got some unnamed records, but we can ignore those. We'll say packaging design and packaging review. And for our wrapping design, we'll also add in some tasks. We'll add in wrapping design and wrapping review. Now on our tasks table, we'll see four different tasks. The first column, which is the name column or the primary key or the ID column needs to be unique. Now, when we set up a project or a task, if you anticipate having many different tasks that are either named similarly or the same, then it's good practice to join the different field values into a primary key or the primary ID. The first thing I'll do is change the notes column into a single line text field. Once that's done, I'm going to rename this notes column to the task name column. After that, I'll copy in the task names into the new task name column we just created. The final step here is to join together the project and task name so it increases our likelihood of having a unique primary ID. Our formula will concatenate the project name and the task name with a separator in between. Now we've got a task table that's going to be much more scalable as you add hundreds of different tasks and as these projects continue to grow. Now when you're logging an interaction, you can add in the date in the primary key and that's another great way of making sure all of your primary keys are unique. I'll also go ahead and delete a couple of extra fields. The last thing we want to do is link together our people table. Within our people table, I've added John, Jane, and Susan. I'm also going to change this notes field into a single select field and call it the role field. We'll give John the project manager role, we'll give Jane the developer role, and Susan the designer role. Back in our tasks table, we'll want to link to the people record. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to keep this relationship as a one-to-one -one relationship between tasks and people, in which case we will not be allowing linking to multiple records. We'll assign Susan, who is our designer, to the design tasks, and John, who is our project manager, to the review tasks. We'll also rename the people column to assignee. As you may have noticed, every time we've created a linked record, a column for that corresponding table also appears on the opposite table. So for example, in our tasks table, we created a assignee field that's linked to people. Now, when we go back to our table column, there's also going to be a column created for the tasks. 
And this is because the linking creates a two-way relationship. So Airtable knows that you're linking the tasks to the people and at the same time, you're linking the people to the tasks. And that's why that field will automatically appear. In this video, we learn how to set up linked fields. And in our next video, we're going to show you how to make the most of your data by using roll-up fields. My name is Cherry Yang, and we at AirOps Consulting want to thank you for investing your own knowledge base and learning with us. There are even more great lessons and content in our Airtable Bootcamp training course. You can sign up for the course at the links down below. If you need a little extra help with your project or just want to hand it over completely to the professionals, we can help our clients with all of their Airtable and Zapier needs. You can schedule an initial consultation call with me with the links down below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You don't want to miss this next video.